Hey guys, welcome to our first week of Cool Treats of Summer. This series will show us stories in the Bible of kids coming to Jesus to be blessed. For you to have an opportunity to see and know the place that you hold in Jesus' heart as a child. And for you to see that all, all of us need to do is have faith like a little child if we are to enter into heaven. I am so excited about the next seven weeks, not just because of the great lessons we will have, but the fun treats we are going to get to share along the way, even if we are social distancing. So let's get started. Okay, so this next video is about to make Popsicle Stick Ninja Throwing Stars. I will add the YouTube link to this video so that you can save it for later if you would like. Now, here's the deal. One, you have to get permission from your parents to go on YouTube. Two, you have to get permission from your parents to make the ninja stars. And three, you cannot throw these at people and should probably play them with, with them outside. So raise your right hand and repeat after me. No, seriously, you have to do this, okay? All right, ready? I promise to follow these rules. All right. If you do end up making these, tell your parents to send me the pictures. Here we go. Ninja throwing stuff. For this project, I'm going to show you how to defend yourself on the stick bomb battlefield by making a homemade arsenal of spring-loaded stick bombs and throwing stars that explode on impact. Start this project with a handful of popsicle sticks or craft sticks like these. I found mine in packs of 100 at a local dollar store, and one pack is usually enough to make over 20 exploding stick bombs. Now let's get down on the carpet because the sponginess of the rug will make it much easier to mass produce our mini weapons. And to start, let's kick off production with the boomerang bomb. It only uses four sticks and it's one of the easiest throwing stars to make. Start by overlapping two sticks on one end so they form an arrow pointing to the left with the yellow stick on the top side. Now place the red stick on top of these two so the bottom lines up with the green stick and the top intersects with the middle of the yellow. To bind them together, hold the sticks firmly together where the yellow and red sticks meet the green, then push the tip of the orange stick under the middle of the green one and lock the other end under the yellow stick. That's how quick and easy it is to make the boomerang bomb, and now if you throw it at a hard surface like a wall or a refrigerator, the sticks will explode on impact. Now check this out. With a fairly simple transformation and one extra stick, we can easily convert the boomerang bomb into a five-point throwing star. Hold the boomerang with both hands at the bottom and carefully push the points together in a way that makes the orange and blue sticks jut out on either side. Now you should be able to take the red stick and push one end under the orange piece, then bend it over and lock it underneath the blue. With a bit of careful tweaking, you'll have a great looking five point throwing star that'll give a satisfying spring-loaded burst of energy when it connects with your target. Next up is the butterfly bomb and for this one we need five sticks. Start by crossing two yellow sticks to form an X, then drop a green stick in the center so it crosses through the middle horizontally. Use your thumb to hold them down so you can slide the end of a red stick under one of the yellow ones, bending it over the green stick and locking it into place under the yellow stick on the other side. Now use your thumb and finger to hold this side together so it doesn't spring apart, then take the other red stick and lock it into place on the other side the same way you did before. The tension will hold it together and that's how you make the butterfly bomb. The hand grenade also uses five sticks but in a completely different way. Place the yellow stick in the center and overlap the two purple sticks so they diverge away from each other but meet together at the top. Hold all the sticks together with your thumb so you can wedge one of the red sticks so it's under the yellow but on top of the two purple sticks. Then grab the other red stick and weave it the opposite way so it goes under the purple sticks and over the yellow. This will lock it together and the hand grenade is done. These are one of my favorite stick bombs to make because they hold together really well and are one of the most volatile when they go off. The four square is another quick and easy build and uses six sticks. 
Set the two blue sticks side by side so they're parallel to each other, then set two green sticks perpendicular to the ends so the whole thing makes a square. The orange stick goes on top so it overlaps the center of the green ones, and now the yellow stick needs to slide under the middle portion of the blue one on the side. Hold the yellow stick firmly in place so you can pull the other blue stick to the side, and carefully weave it over the tip of the yellow stick, locking it back into place under the green. The four square is done, and despite its humble look, it'll still blow to pieces just like all the others. Now a quick and cool variation of the four square is the flying fish. Simply slide two of the edges on the square toward each other, then turn it 90 degrees and do the same thing with the other two edges. To finish up, gently push two opposite corners together and it'll compress the square into a flat diamond shape. Now it has the look of an exotic fish and should make a nice addition to your collection. The hardest stick bomb to make is a six-pointed throwing star and you'll need six sticks if you're up for the challenge. Lay the blue stick down first, then place the red and yellow sticks in a V pattern, overlapping it in the middle by about an inch and with the yellow stick on top. Now take the orange stick and push one end under the blue tip, then angle it toward the center. Do the same thing on the other side with the green stick and place the tip so it's overlapping the orange one at the top. Now grab the purple stick and hold everything in place with one hand while pushing the purple stick under the tip of the red one. Bend it over the green and orange tips, then lock it together underneath the yellow stick. It probably won't look very pretty at first, but if you carefully tweak the stick so the tips line up, you'll end up with a really cool looking six-pointed throwing star like this. These are the hardest ones to make, so if you're able to build these, you'll be a master on the stick bomb battlefield. Well now you know how to use a handful of popsicle sticks to create an arsenal of exploding throwing stars, whether it's just for fun or for defending your empire in popsicle stick warfare. By the way, I use six sticks to build a bonus bomb, but I won't show you how to make it. Instead, let's see if you can figure out how to do it on your own. And if you find that regular popsicle sticks are too hard to work with, try using jumbo craft sticks or tongue depressors instead. They're actually a lot easier to use and might be more intimidating to your enemies as well. Well, that's it for now. If I gotta admit, that's pretty cool and I may have to be trying some of those myself. So, today's cool treat is one that we see set up along roadsides and yard sales all summer long. They are manned usually by kids who are ready to begin to take on the great American dream. Any guesses? That's right. Lemonade stands are fun ways to kit for kids to set up and make some money. Also, they are a great way to teach kids about responsibility and a work ethic. You know, these stands are usually frequented by kids, family members, and businessmen who are inspired to help kids learn about the great American dream of owning their own business and working hard to achieve success in life. After all, you guys are the hope of our future. But you know, not only that, but you're also our church of today. You are so important in God's eyes to the kingdom and an actual picture of how we are to start our faith walk with Jesus. Jesus pointed this out very clearly in our story found in Mark 10, 13 through 16. Let's watch this Bible story. It was a beautiful day. Jesus was teaching and of course, a crowd had gathered to listen. Jesus' teaching attracted all kinds of people, those that wanted to listen and learn, and those that wanted to try and prove him wrong, and almost try to start a fight as well. Well, this day, let's just say a small disturbance had broken out. Not anything like what Jesus was expecting or had encountered before, and certainly not involving kids and his own disciples. The people had brought their children to Jesus this day. They were hoping he might touch them and bless them. The disciples, though, shooed them off. But Jesus was irate, and he let them know it. Don't push these children away. Don't ever get between them and me. These children are at the very center of life in the kingdom. Mark this, unless you accept God's kingdom in the simplicity of a child, you'll never get in. Then gathering the children up in his arms, he laid his hands of blessing on them. Wow, that was a real eye-opener for some people and a great reminder of how important kids are to the kingdom of God and to the adults as to how we are to find faith. Wow, I love this story. And it's such a real eye opener for some people and a great reminder for all of us of just how important you guys are for the kingdom of God. And it's actually a reminder to us adults as to how we are to find faith. So you may have heard of the saying, when life gives you lemons. And if you see my shirt, I actually, it says, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. 
that's right. So, well, I think that's exactly what Jesus did in this story. You know, the kids and the families probably had a pretty sour taste in their mouth as they lined up to see Jesus, and Jesus' disciples shooed them away. But that ends up turning into a refreshing reminder of just how important kids are to the kingdom of God. So our memory verse this week is 1 John 3, 1b, and it says, What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. So it's from this verse that we really see God as our heavenly Father. So I want you to take a look at this slide. This slide says, I am a picture of how you need to become to enter heaven. And look at all my friends. This is really a great reminder to all of us, young and old, not to lose our childlike tendencies as faith and wonder. Now this next slide says, I am a child of God. And we all are children of God. And this is a great reminder of the role that we play all of us as children of the king and in the kingdom. So let's take a look at one more Bible verse before we do our review questions. 1 Timothy 4 through 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct in love and faith and in purity. You know, in this verse, we see that because of our age, sometimes people can look down on us or diminish the value of our relationship with God. But you know what? The last time I checked, kids did not get a child size or junior version of God or the Holy Spirit in them. They have God. He is alive and well in all of us, regardless of our size, our shape, or our race. So, let's do a quick review of today's lesson, and then we will close in prayer. So, question one. Who turned the children away for Jesus? Yeah, it was those disciples that turned them away. They were like, no, go, go. But, let's redo uh, lesson two. Question two. Jesus pointed out two important things about children and the father. What did he say? That's right. Let the children come to me. We need to become like them to enter into heaven. Question three. We see that God is our father and we are his. This one should be easy. I just said it. We are his children. Every single one of us, no matter what color we are, no matter what size we are, no matter how old or young we are, we're all children in his eyes. I love that. So question four, when life gives you lemons, make, make lemonade. That's right. So when something turns sour in your life, you always have an option to make that lemonade and turn that something sour into something really sweet. So 1 Timothy 4.12 tells us not to let people do what? Never let people look down on us because we are young. Because we're all still learning about Jesus, right? We're all still learning about God. We're not going to know it all until we get there to meet him someday. So... Don't ever let the people tell you you don't have enough faith. Because I know if you've got Jesus' love in your heart, you have tons of faith. Guys, I've had a great time with our lemonade lesson today. Next week is Otter Pops, and I'm going to have those tasty treats for you in the foyer up at the church. So don't pass up getting one of those. Tell your moms and dads, stop at the church and go and get an Otter Pop for you to have for next Sunday. Let's pray, guys. Ready? Three two, one. Father God, thank you so much for this lesson. Thank you for teaching us that when we have lemons or when life gives us lemons, that all we need to do is add a little sweetness to it and make some amazing lemonade. And Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for um, showing us how important we as children are 
to Jesus and to God and to God's kingdom. And we pray all of these things in your precious son's name. Amen. All right, guys. I'll see you next week with some Otter Pops. Bye.